What's up, y'all? I'm Ryan. This is So and So Farms, and it's hot. We are in the middle of June here, and um, 100 degree days, but everything's growing. We've got all the rice in, we've got all the beans in, we've done the replanting on the water that we had on the beans. Um, everything's rolling smoothly. Shane and them have really kept everything up. Um, we're just doing a little crop walk today. Got some dry land beans we're about to look at. Grass them with me, so let's get to it. I am cheating a little bit because this is the best dry land patch that we have, but uh, it helps me gauge things. So right now we're really needing to rain. Um, Hopefully we get one in the next couple days. There's a decent chance. This is a Sunday and we have a decent chance on Tuesday and Wednesday. Braxton, take a walk out that way. Let's see how tall these beans are. So as you can see, beans are getting waist to chest high. Um, and that's good. Plant health is looking good. We have done our last spraying. Got a little bit of insect damage on here, but I'm not noticing any worms. Um, we actually, this week, are doing our worm sweeping. We got hit by army worms, if you remember, a few years back on our first year farming. Um, but other than that, everything's looking pretty solid. Putting on pods. Lots of three and four beaners. We like to see that. And they are loaded from top to bottom. So for a dry land patch, you're not going to get much better than this. This field always delivers. Um, we've always had really good luck with this field. So this is my first dry land patch I wanted to stop by. We're going to look at a couple irrigated patches and then we'll move from there. We're going to hop out real quick and check some... Uh, rice we have row rice and flooded rice in this same farm here levee rice we call it now this is where we got levees built in and we're doing it by land by lands or patties or whatever you want to call it and we got row rice on this side so our rice is rice is a crop that needs to be flooded uh, needs a lot of water rather a lot of the flooding is to hold down other weeds and grass pressure. Um, it's, it's an argument with people. Uh, is row rice high yielding as levy rice? In our experience last year, we had some row rice that was our highest yielding rice. Um, but other people have different results. So everybody has to do what works for their operation. Ours is on 30 inch rows here. You can't really see the rows anymore because of their rice is, you know, uh, tillered out I guess you would say but um, yeah this rice has one more shot of fertilized to go in about three weeks it'll start putting the grain on putting the head on uh, pushing the head out so this rice here probably has passed the row rice um, just because it does keep a constant flood and it's about ready for its last shot of fertilized so that's what we call mid-season we do we do fertilize before we plant it. We do fertilize right before we go to flood, called the pre-flood. And then we do a mid-season, um, right about the time where it starts to make grain, things like that. We give it a shot right before then. And then on the row rice, we kind of do the same program, but that mid-season rice, we will split it up and do like 125 and 125 and kind of spoon feed it as we call it. taller since last time I was out here they've had good sunshine we planted these beans really early a lot of our beans were planted in April um, and the earlier the better obviously April beans are going to yield a whole lot better than June beans are um, that's just the way we see it so we want to plant as early as possible and we did that we had a dry spring uh, we didn't know if we were getting too rambunctious at the time 
cruise control for the rest of the year. Uh, that's something that really surprised me and Shane uh, once we got started farming. The amount of backlash that we got from the farm community. Um, it's really odd that, that people would want I don't, know, don't want to say too much, but you know, a lot of root against the underdog. I don't, I don't understand that. We started from nothing, inherited nothing, bought nobody out. I mean, we're just figuring this thing out on our own and trying to make a way. And catch a lot of backlash for that. So, got opinions on that? Leave them in the comments. Really proud of the way the soybean crop is looking. They're really clean. Um, we came, we, we've done all of our spraying, and Shane's been doing a good job. He sprays our roads so we don't quite have to keep them mowed down. We do have a few that Braxton and I are going to go bush hog here in a little bit. But overall, the bean crop looks really good. The rice crop looks really good. We've had a we had an unusual spring with really, really dry, perfect weather there early in April. And so we just hammered down, um, and then it uh, it got really wet. May had a lot of flooding. We lost a lot of bottom ends of fields. Not as much as we were expecting because it didn't get really hot. What happens is the water uh, gets on the beans, and then the sun will absolutely cook them. And that's usually what kills the overflow beans. But anyway, it didn't get real hot. We got all of our replanting done. You know that is why we buy insurance and replant insurance and high dollar seed with 100% replants and that's why you do all that so it was it was our philosophy that we take the gamble and plant early if we got to replant some tail ends then we just got to replant them the worry is that the beans and the rice will all get ready at the same time rice will lay down if it sits in the field too long beans will pop out of the holes mother nature kind of has a way of separating those things so i'm hoping she does her thing this year we have two combines so uh, like on the dry land beans if they get ready real early they're more prone to pop out uh, we'll pull the combine off and go cut that couple hundred acres of dry land so you gotta work on your feet move on your feet learn to adapt and adjust and overcome doing a little bush hogging, mowing, beautification. Me and Braxton uh, got the 8270 and the 20 foot bush hog. Mowing alongside some pretty rice here. This is levy rice that I showed you earlier. And the row rice is on this side of the road. We got some beans here. You can see they got water on them. This bottom half and we already have replanted them. The top half still looks pretty good. So, not too big of a loss there. Um, like I said, that's why you have insurance, why you have replants. But we're going along this road in between them, cleaning it up. That way, when Shane and Matt and Robert or myself are running water, we've got a good load road. Plus, the landlords like to see their ground looking good, and we're glad to oblige. trimming things up. Shane uh, does a pretty good job of keeping our road sprayed down, but you want to get too close to the rice here because that roundup would kill the rice. But uh, once I go bust it one time, it shouldn't grow back till probably the end of the summer. We may have to bush hog one more time. But Shane's really good about trimming up all of our roads with a spray boom. A little bit of extra chemical, a little bit of extra time. Save us a lot more time and fuel in the long run. We went to a 20 foot bush hog this year so we could get down in the ditch banks and clean them up better. Our 15 foot. We did a good job, but it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't get, the wing wouldn't get down far enough in the ditch to clean up the ditch. You know, little trees and saplings and stuff that grow. We like to keep those cleaned up. 